I'm going to do a little video to address all of the loveliness from Etsy today. We have all woken up this morning to the lovely little message from Etsy. That soon items that are eligible to ship free to U.S. shoppers will get priority placement in a U.S. search. So that's just lovely. Of course, we all are just dying to get into that um, lineup there because they're going to give us priority um, so that we can um, show up better. Great. Nope, I don't like it. And I have several reasons I'm going to address as to why. I'm also going to address several reasons why the main thing is we're just going to have to suck it up, figure it out, and deal with it. Because they're kind of forcing our hand. I've been expecting that to be the case. Um, for a while now that they're going to end up forcing us to do this. Um, it's simply because I want to keep up with Amazon and their Amazon's Prime free shipping. Now, everybody on Amazon does not do free shipping. I don't. Um, I may end up doing that simply because of what's going on with Etsy because I don't want my price to be lower on Amazon than it is on Etsy. I want to keep my item, my prices pretty even across the board. In order to do that, I'm going to have to adjust prices everywhere, um, basically. So I'm going to have to look at that um, all the way around, you know, at all my sites. And, you know, if you sell on multiple sites, I think everybody's going to have to, to do that. Um, basically to cover yourself. Um, you don't want stuff on Amazon looking cheaper because then your sales will go to Amazon and guess what? You know, it takes longer to get your money from Amazon and I don't want that to happen. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to have to keep it so it's evened out. So here's basically what it looks like they're saying. They are wanting to force us into doing this. They've been pushing it. Etsy has got it in their head that, you know, customers automatically go for the free shipping option. Now, I don't really care for the free shipping. I mean, when I'm looking at that, um, I look at listings and say free shipping and I will tend to personally, and I know everybody doesn't do this, but personally, um, hang on, I'm going to make sure everybody realizes we're on live now so you can catch up with us. Um, personally, um, I tend to look at things and I see the one with free shipping. Now, if there's one next to it that's not free shipping, it's going to obviously look a lower price to you. And I like, you know, a better, the best price I can get. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to check the listing that has the lower price check what their shipping is, and compare it to the one with the free shipping price. I always do that. I do it on eBay. I do it everywhere. Um, because I want to, to make sure that I'm not paying, you know, somebody that has been giving free shipping more than what I should be. Because I want to make sure that they're not overcharging me for shipping and that I'm going to end up paying, you know, 
ten dollars more than I would have if I just paid the shipping. Uh, I started doing that really because several years ago um, my husband purchased something off of eBay and it was a low price. It looked like it was cheap but the shipping was tremendous and it ended up that the total cost of the item was over a hundred dollars because they charged so much for shipping. So now I always check what is the real shipping cost. Most of us are smart and intelligent. We all realize that the shipping is paid by somebody. The seller or the customer, but either way it boils down to the customer is going to pay for it no matter what. It's going to be added into the cost of the item. No seller, no retail store, nobody can just say, okay, here's the cost of my item. And I know it's going to cost me 15 or $20 or $4 or whatever it is to ship it. But I'm going to eat that and I'm going to pay it so my customer doesn't pay anything for shipping. Nope, not happening. We're going to say, you know, you got to cover it. Somebody has to pay for it. So you can't charge what you've always been charging and take the cost of that shipping out of your regular selling price. You're losing money. Nobody can do that. Walmart can't do it. Nobody can do it. So their prices are going to be high, higher. If they're offering you free shipping on Walmart.com, and the price on Walmart.com is the same as it is in the store, then they're overcharging you in the store because they've got to cover the shipping cost somewhere. I mean, it's, it's just a fact of life. Somebody's paying for the shipping. You can't do it for free. The Postal Service does not ship for free, and we all know they've recently raised their rates. So, the only option is you up the cost of your item and cover it 100% in the cost of the item. Or you up it and charge a, low, a, a lower shipping cost. Well, that was working great. Made your shipping look cheaper, but here we go. Etsy wants us to give free, and their little incentive for us to give free is they're going to give you priority placement in the U.S. search because you're offering free shipping. So that means you're going to have to add 100 percent of the cost into your item um, if you do it that way. Your other option is keep your prices the same. Well, actually not even keep your prices the same. You're going to have to up prices regardless. Your other option is to offer free shipping with items over $30, $50, whatever it is. If you sell a reef and it's $75 and you offer free shipping over, say, $100 so that you can get seen in the little free shipping search to make Etsy happy, if the item's a $70 reef, they're either going to buy two or they're going to pay the cost of the shipping regardless. But for those people that buy the hundred dollars worth and you have to eat the shipping on, you still got to cover that. So every item in your shop, even if you go that route where it's over X amount, you're going to have to up the price of that item by a few dollars so that the few people that actually get the free shipping, the cost is covered somewhere, which it's not really fair to all customers in general that if they get something that's under a hundred dollars, part of what they're paying is covering the cost of shipping for someone that's buying the over a hundred dollar item and getting free shipping. So, but there's no other way to do it. You, you've got to run the cost in at least half of it into the cost of every item if you're going to offer free shipping to those that purchase over X amount, you know, the cost is going to have to be added in there over the whole shop or only into the items that are over X amount, which makes it X amount higher. So that's a little hard to figure out.
Now, for me, my items all cost $4 or a little less to ship. That's including the $2 and up to $2 or $3.50, depending on where it's shipping in the U.S. now, since they've increased the way our cost and the way they run shipping, plus the cost of my bubble mailer and my box. So I figured in generally $4 covers your cost of, of what the actual shipping label is going to cost me and the packaging, and, and I'm good. And I might make $0.50 cent extra on it, but at least I'm covered with my low shipping cost. So for me, I can ship multiple items in that one package that cost me, that I'm charging $4 for. So I have my settings set. So if you buy more than one item, um, it's free. It doesn't cost extra. It's the same amount to ship three items as it is to ship one item. And that encourages customers to buy multiple. The problem I have with this is, with this new thing, is customers are going to get taken regardless. So as for me now, currently the way I've had things set, say a customer like yesterday, I just finished these necklaces, um, bought, or and I'm getting ready to do keychains. They bought three keychains. They paid $4 to ship the three keychains. Well, if I had to add $4 to the cost of the item, it's going to go from being $16 to $20 for the one keychain. If they buy three, they're going to pay 20 times three. So they're going to pay 60 bucks for it. So instead of paying $52 which includes the $4 shipping fee, they're going to now pay $60 for the three items. So this same customer that bought these keychains yesterday and paid $48 for the keychains, $4 for shipping, total $42, will end up paying a total of $60. Bucks. So they're going to end up paying $8 more for shipping than they would have. They're going, it's going to, the total cost of the item is going to cost them eight bucks. Well, here's the thing. There's this eight extra dollars. So basically, you as a seller are getting eight extra dollars in your pocket. Because since we're offering free shipping, how stupid would we look to give a refund on a shipping cost? that we never charge the customer. You're not really going to say, here you go, here's $8 back um, for the shipping averages you paid because they didn't pay shipping. So as a seller, in that case, you come out $8 ahead. The customer is $8 behind. They may not realize it. As a seller, I realize it's costing my customer an extra 8 bucks that if it was done the way I currently have it, it would not have cost them. So I don't like that. I feel like it's taking advantage of customers. But there's nothing I can do to fix that. I can't only charge the customer half of the cost of shipping on every item because then I'm losing money on every sale that's not multiple items. So that's something to consider. Overall, by increasing your item cost to cover the shipping, for those multiple order items, you end up making more money on it uh, in your own par pocket. Etsy's going to make a few dollars more because your total cost is more, or they're going to make a few cent more, whatever. But in the end, you get more money. Okay, to a seller, that's not so bad looking because it's more money in your pocket. But I feel kind of bad for my customers. But it can be done. Since they're forcing all of us basically to do this, or we're not going to get seen, 
Everybody on Etsy is going to be forced to incorporate the cost of their items somehow, way or fashion, um, you know, into the item. They're going to cost the shipping is going to go in the item. Um, I, I thought about doing the over thirty dollar thing, but then if I don't increase my cost, I'm going to lose money. Um, a little bit. It, it just depends. I've decided on a. I'm going to try a different strategy and see how it works. Now, for those that sell large items that are expensive to ship, like Sharon has the, um, I think she said $20 because she sells wreaths. They're not cheap to ship across the country. So when you jack the cost of a reef up by $20, you know, that's a lot of money. Um, That's um the customer may notice that. Um but on the other hand, you have to look at it this way so that you don't feel like it's just gouging you blind. And you don't feel so bad about the fact that you're going to be upping the cost of your item by 20 bucks or whatever it is to cover the shipping. It's like Pam said in her video. Um, if everybody that sells the same similar type item to you is having to do the same thing, everybody's cost for a reef is going up by 20 bucks to cover the shipping. There's no way around it. Everybody's going to have to add it in, cover it somewhere. Um, so you won't look like you're exorbitantly high compared to other sellers. You're all going to be in the same boat with this higher cost of your item. Now most customers are going to say, well, everything's going up in the stores. Everything everywhere you know, is going up. Supplies to make that reef has gone up. Shipping's gone up because most regular people know shipping's gone up for the post office if they ever mail anything. So the customer may not think a lot of it. And especially when everyone they look at is in the same price range. And it's going to cost them the same no matter who they buy it from. So the customer's option for that reef is then this. If they prefer to order online, and there are a lot of customers that just like to order online, they don't want to go out and look for someone, they're not going to go to Michael's and pay the ridiculous price that Michael's charges for Reeves that aren't even pretty. At least the ones at our store are not. They're ridiculously priced, and they're not even nice. You know, so they're either going to order online, and they're going to pay the price, or they're going to find a local person you know, in their neighborhood that makes reefs and they're going to buy it from them and save the little bit of shipping. Everybody's not going to go run around and see who sells reefs in their neighborhood. So they're going to just go online and buy that reef from you. You know, they're going to do just like they've always been doing. If they always buy online to get a better quality or what have you, or they're going to do that. Or if they find somebody local, like there's a girl that, you know, is local to me that makes beautiful stuff, sells a ton of reefs just out of her shop. She does mostly funeral flowers, but she does wreaths. They're going to go find somebody like her that they know, and they're going to buy them from there to start with. So if they've always shipped or, you know, purchased them and had them shipped, they're still going to do that. Um, most of them are probably going to realize, okay, it's added in and it's free, but the cost is really not any more than the last one I purchased from them. So yeah, it looks bad and it's it's killing you, you know, is what it looks like to start with that you know, it's hard to to shove it in your price and it's impossible to eat, but yeah, it is impossible to eat. It's it is. You can't do it. But you can increase it in your price. And and that's the thing you got to realize is that um if you increase it in your price, um, 
what you notice is that, but, but sorry, on the other hand, um, that everybody else is having you have to look at it this way too. so that you don't feel like it's just gouging you blind and you don't feel from them. So, yeah, it looks bad and it's, it's killing you, you know, is what it looks like to start with that, you know, it's hard to, to shove it in your price and it's impossible to eat, but yeah, it is impossible to eat. It's, it is. Okay, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Somehow it just kind of clicked off and went dead, but I am back live now. So you'll have to join the next uh, video, um, and we'll continue. I don't know how that happens sometimes. But, I mean, once you, you kind of calm down and settle yourself with the fact that yeah, you know, this is terrible. I got to shove extra 20 bucks into my cost. And you realize that it's not just you. It's everybody. Everybody's having to um everybody's having to do it. You realize, okay, um it's not just me. I'm not the only one in this bear this the situation. We're all going to have to raise our prices so that we can survive. Um, and it, if we're going to stay on Etsy. Now, for me, I don't have a choice, um, really. I mean, I do, but I don't because I make a living on Etsy. I make full-time money on Etsy, and that's where most of my sales have come from. I, I have local sales. Oh, that just reminds me. Sorry, I got another order to do. I forgot about this local. I need to put that in my pile. But, um, yeah, I have local, but I don't have a lot of local ones anymore because I don't do events. I don't have my storefront. Most of my sales are online, you know, because the other thing is there's other people that have decided to start stamping that are near me, and that's kind of hurt my local business, even though they're not as good as mine. Still, you know, they find somebody and they just go with it, but... I do have my following of customers local that do contact me and, and order local, but it's it's not enough to survive on. Um, Etsy is my livelihood. Um, again, all these changes on Etsy is why I, I've decided to keep my Amazon shop, even though I hate it. Um, it is extra money that comes in every month to help me. That's why I'm starting the Zip It shop to, to see how if I can get any sales on the marketplace, but more to see how the AC More place is going to pan out that's opening for their marketplace because it has to be managed through Zip It. So um, that's my main reason for that. And, you know, I'm getting views over there already. I just finished listing everything. So now I've got to reevaluate. Am I going to keep my shipping there the same where customers pay because they're paying me to my PayPal directly? Or do I want to do the same thing I'm going to have to do on Etsy, raise my price so my price on all sites is the same, and I'm offering free shipping everywhere. For now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep my website and Amazon and the others the same. 
and let people pay the, the shipping separately and see which one pans out to be better. But you have to to remember that um, aim, and I'm offering free shipping everywhere. When you're doing this, for now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep my website and it looks bad if you think about it if it's just you having to raise the price and your price is going to be higher than everybody else's. But in the overall, if all your competitors are, are forced to do the same thing, you're all going to prices are going to be higher and so you're all going to look the same and it's not going to be a difference. So then you don't worry about it so much and say, God, I'm going to be so much higher than everybody else because you're not. You're all going to be, everybody's going to be the same. The next thing is, is the preferential treatment due to having free shipping. Since they're forcing us all to do this, all of our prices are going up. So Etsy is going to become a more expensive platform than it has been for customers and they may notice everybody's prices has gone up but they're going to all say but yeah but they're doing free shipping so okay and once everybody makes this move and does it to make Etsy happy even though we all don't like it we can keep it in our little heads that if customers buy more than one we are going to get a little extra money out of it, even though it's unfair to the customer, it's money in our pockets. And you figure out that if they're giving you special treatment to show better because you're saying I offer free shipping and all your competitors are doing it too, nobody's really going to get special treatment because you're all going to be doing free shipping and you're going to be seen just like you are now. So in the end, if everybody just calms down, realizes the basics of it, that you have no choice but to increase the cost, and everybody else is going to have to do the same thing, and that once everybody else is doing free shipping, if you jump on the bandwagon first, you're going to be... Um, Lord have mercy. Yet again. Okay, we'll try this for the third time here. Um, and I am recording this videos in one long recording, so I may be able to condense it down and post this as one video later um, so that it's not on three separate ones. But, and everybody has to keep jumping on a new video. I'm so sorry about that, y'all. But, um... And it just kind of gets me sidetracked when that happens. I'm sorry. Um, you know, once it's done and said, you know, all finished, and everybody makes this move, makes their corrections to cover the cost, accepts the fact that we're just offering free shipping and ignores it because we know customers are still going to pay it, you realize eventually you're going to be back looking exactly like you did um, before and so are all your competitors. You're, you're all going to be showing free shipping and it's going to even back out. They're not going to, you know, if you jump on the bandwagon, go ahead and, and bite the bullet and do it first. It might give you a leg up um, because you'll start being seen first when they make the switch where those that don't do it are going to be behind you. 
But once everybody follows in line and decides, yeah, I'm going to have to do it either way, um, if I want to be seen well, it's going to even back out to be about like it is right now. And you're not going to notice a difference in how customers are finding your shop because every the shops that are doing free are going to be equal again and not going to get priority placement. Um, those that don't will probably shortly decide they better, but once you, you just look at the the basics of it and how it pans out and, and just you realize yeah I gotta add the 20 but so is everybody else it's gonna be okay so that's my thoughts on this you know I'm not happy about the fact that I know my customers are gonna be paying more for multiple items than what they would have in the past um, I have already switched my main shop. I decided to go ahead and do it this morning while I was ticked off about it and just go ahead and bite the bullet and fix it. So I now show free shipping. What I have done is I went in and bulk edited my items and increased the cost of every item by what my shipping cost me or what I've been charging for shipping, added a cost in. I changed my shipping profile to be free with a priority upgrade option uh, for those sellers that, I mean, for those customers that want priority, they can just add the extra um, $4 that it costs to upgrade to priority on it, and it'll cost them $4 instead of 8 because 4 of it's already included in the price. And I bulk edited them all at one time and made the switch. I did not use the on sale app to do it because if I do it this way I will still be able to see how many people have items in their cart whereas if you use the sale option it'll mask that and you won't be able to see that so I didn't want that to happen either and they'll see the little green free shipping thing and, and we're gonna see how that works out for customers I'm going to uh, show you how I did it now because I'm going to sign into one of my other shops I haven't changed yet and um, look at that because if I'm doing it to one I got to do it to all um, so I'm going to go into my shop manager and look at my items this is one of my newer shops that's a little slower than my main one but um, here's how I'm going to do this first I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to look at my shipping settings okay so I have car tags for one price. Um, my decals and my stamp jewelry in that shop. You know, they each have their own shipping setting. So what I'm going to have to do is adjust that for each item. So I'm going to look at the car tags and see what I'm currently charging for shipping for those. And it's a fixed cost of $4. For international it's $13. So since I'm going to add the $4 into the total cost for my international customers, I'm going to just charge the difference of what it is. Now, I only ship to Canada. Uh, the only benefit I can say recently is the Postal Service actually has lowered the cost of shipping to Canada from $13 to like 8 or 9 So I'm going to charge an extra $9, and that's what you do. You put the extra difference here that it's going to cost the customer for prior, for um the shipping. Um, and and I guess they don't 
have regular first class mail for for international anymore is what it's looking like. But I'm going to go ahead and switch that to nine. So my international customers will have um, that. I'm going to add a shipping upgrade option for priority mail, which is express. And I'm going to set priority mail here. Since I'm adding $4 into the cost and it costs eight, I'm going to add an extra four here. So that's going to give me $4 in the cost of the item and $4 they're going to pay to upgrade to cover the $8 that the priority shipping costs. Actually, it might be a little more, so I'm going to, I'm going to charge $4.50 um, to make sure I have it covered. So I'm saving this profile here for now. Then I'm going to go to my listings and I'm going to pull up all my car tags. So I have all my car tags now. I have 39. So I'm, what I'm going to do is click all. So I can do this at one time and I'm going to edit my price. So I'm going to edit the price of the tags. I'm going to increase it by four dollars. So it's going to go from 16 to 20. Um, so I've increased the price on all of them. Then I'm going to go back to my settings and I'm going to readjust the shipping option again. And so I'm going to edit this and it's going to be free. So now all my car tags are going to be free shipping in the US, it's going to cost the customer nine more dollars to ship it to Canada. Is that right? Wait a minute, I want to make sure I got that right. It's going to be, it cost 10. So, actually, I only need to increase it by six. Because um, that would make the total 10 and that will cover the Canada shipping. And I have an express upgrade option for those that want to do that. So, I'm going to save the profile. So when I go back in now and look at my car tags, they all have free shipping. My price has been increased, but it all says free shipping. Um, I'm going to look at it, think about it a little bit and see if I can drop the price to 18 including shipping, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that considering my cost of what it actually cost me to make these. If I can, I'll, I'll lower it even to 19, but I'm going to do each section at a time based on my shipping profile that I currently use. So now I'm going to look at my shipping, pro shipping for my other items. Uh, with the, my next shipping profile. Since I already have all these set up separately, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to look at um, let me make sure I'm not gone off on y'all again. I think it's working, maybe. Um, I'm going to look at the my decal, decal one. I've been doing the same thing for it, so I'm going to ship it, change it to free. I'm going to add a 
add an upgrade to Express. We're going to switch it to Priority Mail and we're going to change it from so they pay an extra two, three dollars to do that. Additional items are zero. And I'm going to change, save this profile for all of those items. I'm going to the listings for the decals. So all of my decals now, I have 44. I'm going to edit all of those. And this is where it's going to get sticky. Because these typically are cheaper. So I'm going to have to edit the pricing on those. And I'm going to increase it by 350. So now the price of the decal is, is more expensive than it was. Um, and I do have those based on the size. So it's going to increase, it takes care of the variation price increase too. So I have those done now. And I'm going to go back in and do my last one for my stamped jewelry. And edit it. So I've been charging four dollars. It's going to be free. I have my um, express option priority already in there. So I've, I've already added that and saved it. So all I got to do now is go into my listings and upgrade the cost of each item by four dollars. And I'm going to hope this don't kill me. Um, Sure, I'm doing all of them. So, edit prices, increase by four dollars. So, now this shop is currently all free shipping. going to take a while for the last ones. They slowly change, but that's how you can do it easily. Um, so that you save yourself some time. I just recommend for everybody to just kind of take a few minutes, sit back and reflect on it a little bit and, and realize it looks bad, but due to the fact that you are not the only one in this boat, other sellers are going to have to do the exact same thing you are, and they're all going to be raising their prices. So once it's done, so we can just satisfy Etsy, the whole fear of I've had to increase my prices and I'm going to lose sales will kind of rest easy with you because you're not the only one raising them. And so everybody's just going to be raised. And to a customer that doesn't come in and shop every single day because no one does that, they're really not going to notice anything other than now we suddenly have free shipping. If they've never looked at your item before, they're not going to know what the cost was yesterday. They're going to just know what the cost is today and that it says free. I hope that maybe this is kind of a little more enlightening to you. Um, maybe this will help you 
to kind of wrap your head around it and learn to accept it a little bit better and how it's kind of going to work. Even for those with big, large items, I realize it seems a lot harder for people with large items because that cost is more. Now, if you sell reefs and that's what you sell that's, that's large and you kind of have a general item of what idea of what reefs always cost you to ship, and it's going to be X amount for the most part, then it's easy to cover it in. Even if, like, for vintage items that vary so much um, based on weight and things like that, unfortunately, vintage sellers are going to have a little harder time um, adjusting their prices, I think. So I would wait and see what Etsy's tool they're going to show um, or give us does to to do that for the based on the individual items where you where you are um, having to adjust prices individually. Um, hopefully they will have some kind of tool. Now they had something they were trying that I think may have automatically figured it for you um, that like increased it by whatever and and did it, but. Um, those are going to be a little bit trickier, but because you've already figured out your weight and stuff when you list it and you know about what it's going to cost you to ship it, you may have to go in and do them individually, unfortunately, but you can just take the cost that you figured it's going to be, add it into the item, and then, you know, change it that way to free. Um, it will take you a little longer than it just took me to change a whole shop with 200 items, but... you can do it and it's just one of those things you have to roll with the punches and once you get it done then you have to decide if you're on multiple platforms am I going to increase my prices and do the same thing on all platforms or leave it like it is for a little while um, simply because you know if you're on Amazon Amazon doesn't want your prices to look lower on Etsy than they do on Amazon and you got to think about that too. I, I'm thinking about it personally because I don't want customers that find me on both places to jump on Amazon and get it cheaper because it ain't my favorite platform. So I'd rather keep the prices the same everywhere, I think, um, so that my Etsy customers don't run to another site. Unless they're going to run to my personal site. And I try to keep things a little better there because I don't have them as much cost anyway. So it may help. Hey, it might help improve my personal site uh, customer some. I've had somebody that got a gift. Someone ordered today and she messaged me on my personal site and wants to place a bulk order for a wedding. So yay me. But, you know, I just encourage everybody instead of sitting around griping about it, you know, I... I took about 10 minutes to digest it and just said, you know what? I got no choices here. They're forcing us into this just like I figured they would eventually, just like they took away my PayPal option. And so now I'm having to figure out another option to get more sales going in my PayPal account. And I'm working on that with some other platforms. So you just have to take it in stride and realize if this is your full-time business, You've got to take it as part of doing business and roll with the punches, y'all. Um, i got to get back, and I apparently have uh, three, four, five more items to make for my day, and then I have a funeral this afternoon. I'm going to try to get to it at five, so i got to get cracking. Y'all have a good afternoon.